Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Kero Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing The Magic of Ordinary Days, the novel as well as the TV adaptation. The book was written back in 2001 by Anne Howard Creel and the TV film came out in 2005 starring Kerry Russell, Steve Ulrich and Mare Winningham. This will be a spoiler-free review, so sit back and enjoy. My first introduction to The Magic of Ordinary Days was through the movie adaptation, but I can't remember how long ago that was because I've rewatched it so many times since. I can't even remember how it is that I came to know about the story, but I'm glad that I found it. Because stories about arranged marriages have always fascinated me. Whether it was forced upon the couple by their parents, or whether one party wants to agree to it and the other one doesn't, whether they're royalty and that's what they did back then, or even if both parties know that this isn't really what they want, but they're willing to go through with it for whatever reason. For example, one of my favorite arranged marriages in literature is that of Fiona and Patty Cleary from the novel The Thornbirds. And that's a bit similar to what happens in The Magic of Ordinary Days. But yes, anyways, for years I've been watching The Magic of Ordinary Days and I wanted to read the book and now I finally did and that's why I'm here. It's set in the 1940s in Colorado with World War II as its background. The protagonist of the story is a young woman called Livy Dunn. She comes from a nice family and she dreams of traveling the world and being an archaeologist, but then her mother passes away and life turns in quite a dramatic way. Seeking some sort of solace for her loss, Livy ends up meeting this man and she gets pregnant by him. And this was quite shocking for a woman back in the 40s because they weren't married. So when the father of the child disappears, Livy's father decides to have her marry a stranger called Ray. Ray is a farmer and he and Livy have never met and yet Ray agrees to this arranged marriage and that's the main plot of the book. What happens to these two strangers who end up getting married? We follow Livy as she steps into the quiet life of a farmer's wife and we see her struggling to try to adjust to all of these changes in her life. There are also some other storylines for example we get an idea of what it was like for American people with Japanese ancestry during World War II after Pearl Harbor and how they were sent to work camps and we see how society treated them back then sort of as outcasts and Libby ends up meeting two girls in this situation and we see what happens after they become friends I give both the book and the TV movie a 5 out of 5 stars review, I really recommend it. I have always loved the TV film and I can't find anything wrong with it. And now that I've read the novel, I think it's quite a good adaptation. But anyways, what I really want to review here is a book. It took me a little bit to like it, but then at one point I suddenly realized that I was thoroughly enjoying it. I read it in a day actually, and while the story doesn't claim to be this ambitious family saga or epic drama or whatever, it delivers what it promises and it actually ended up leaving me with a lot more than I thought of when I was done with it. It is a quite gentle book since it considers a way of life that can be considered by some repetitive and yet it reads really smoothly as it describes the reality of women in arranged marriages or the reality of farmers wives decades ago. I ended up loving how being married to a stranger, that situation, how it was described here and since this is told from Libby's point of view I found her quite a modern woman because back in the 40s it wasn't that popular for a girl to want to put her ambitions first before everything else. But then it also shows the other side of this argument, how giving up one's dreams and taking different ones and changing and accepting that life isn't always the way we want it to at one point. It's not all that bad because maybe we don't always know what's best for us. Here we see a lot of second opportunities and how one's mistakes doesn't necessarily have to define us but we can learn from them and be better persons for it. There are a lot of powerful messages going around here. So yes, The Magic of Ordinary Days is a quite a mature story because it deals with difficult situations and yet maybe because the protagonist was the same age as me I felt weird because I thought that she was always thinking very wisely and it made me wonder how I would have acted in her shoes thus that's why I give the story a 5 out of 5 stars review because it left me with a lot of constructive food for thought I also as a side note love the female friendships that are shown here even though the TV adaptation has a happier ending than the book in that regard overall it's quite a lovely moving story very touching but for the moment that's all I have to say I keep pinging my fingers crossed that you enjoyed it please let me know if you did or if you didn't whatever you want to talk about it the movie, the novel I can't wait for you to share your experiences with the magic of ordinary days with me in the description box below you can find the link to the good Ritz page for the novel as well as the IMDb page for the TV movie adaptation. I thank you kindly for watching this video. I'm Carrera, the mental traveler, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye!